two dynamic actors, two fascinating takes. Let's have some fun. I'm Jeff Savage, and this is Take Two. Welcome to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. What do a corpse, a juror, a woman petting her cat, and a punk rock teenager all have in common? They're all examples of roles that a background actor may have to play at any given time. Now, background actors are often considered the unsung heroes of the acting community. Though often relegated to non-speaking roles, today we are going to hear from two extraordinary background actors here in the Dallas community. Robert Honigsfeld and Susan Skowiak. Welcome to Take Two. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you, Jeff. Us. Nice to be here. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for being a, a guest on our show. You know, I want to give our audience members an opportunity to find out what it's really like to be a working actor in the background area, in the area. Oftentimes we see background people on, on, on productions and shows, but we don't really know what it's like to live that life. Mm. So Robert, I want to ask you, uh, what was your first onset experience specifically as a background actor? And tell our audience how you actually booked that job. Well, Jeff, I've been, uh, I've been acting for a long time. I started acting when I was in high school, but um, I was a practicing chiropractor uh, here in Texas for 45 years. Fantastic. And about two and a half years ago, when I retired from chiropractic, I decided to go back into what I found to be my passion, which was acting. But I knew I didn't want to have any major roles. I knew I didn't want to be memorizing lines, and I wanted to be a background actor. And so what I did was I actually went on to Facebook, okay. and I saw that there were groups on Facebook which were casting groups. And I saw a casting call for a, uh, a particular TV show, uh, which was uh, called The Chosen. And I submitted an email response to the casting call saying, hey, you know, if, uh, if you're looking for an old white man with a beard, I'm your guy. And um, I got a response and they said, we'd love to have you. Great. And so that's kind of how it started for me about two and a half years ago. Great. So, so directly through Facebook, you found your first uh, background acting gig. So. That's exactly right. That's, that's how I found it. That's fantastic. Susan, same question to you. What was your first on-camera experience as a background actor? Yeah, so, you know, I was in the corporate world for many, many years. Um, and, you know, I always said when I retired, I wanted to get into background. That's what I wanted to do in retirement because it just seems like it would be, you know, really fun to do. Um, and I was very lucky to be able to retire um, back in 2020, actually at the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And like Robert, I went on to Facebook because I really didn't know, like, where do you find these things, right? So it's a lot of research. And I went on to Facebook and I found a bunch of uh, casting sites as well. And I posted, uh, there was one posting for it. It was a 1940s um, documentary uh, about a pilot who was shot down uh, in France. And so I submitted my picture um, to the site, and they chose me and contacted me and said, hey, yeah, we'd like to have you join our cast, uh, but you have to get your own costume. So. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. what, what, were you, what were you cast as? What was your role? In it, was, it, was a, it was a townsfolk person. So I just I went to the local vintage shop here in Dallas and found something that appeared to be something from the 1940s and brought that down with me and stood in the hot sun for, you know, three hours <laughs> as a townsfolk person. Yeah. Yep. Robert, do you remember what, uh, what role you played on The Chosen as your first? Uh, oh, absolutely. I played the part of one of the Pharisees. Okay. And so I was actually cast as what they call a featured extra, as opposed to just an extra. Okay. And, you know, and a lot of the people that are watching may not understand the differences between those. Uh, you know, a background person and an extra are basically the same. Those terms are interchangeable. But a featured extra is a background person that actually stands out, actually has a little bit more airtime, face time, still no lines, still no credits, okay? But because that role is a little bit more of a standout role, they call it a featured extra. The nice thing about it is you get paid a little bit more. Oh, great. As a featured extra, as opposed to just a background. Gotcha, gotcha, that's, that's actually quite interesting. So for our audience who 
you know, don't really understand the ins and the outs of the day in the life of the actor. Mm -hmm. Can you describe to me, uh, Susan, what is it like when you, um, when you arrive on set? Uh, describe what happens when you arrive. Um, what do you do from that point? Yeah, so I mean, it, it can actually vary a little bit depending on the size of the production that you're doing. So there's, there's some where you bring your own uh, outfits um, and then a lot of uh, people will already you know, do their own hair and do their own makeup. And then, but they do have hair and makeup there that'll sit there and go, yeah, it looks good, or no, it doesn't look good, we want to change it up. And so you arrive on set and you're basically waiting for them to call you. Um, they have a holding area for the actors, for the background actors, and mm -hmm. so you sit there until they call you on set. Um, then there's other productions where you actually, um, where they give you a costume, and so you go there, you get your, you put your costume on, and then you have to go in hair and makeup, and then again you go to holding until they actually want to call you on set, and then you go to set, and then they have the the PAs there helping you, you know, telling you where to go and what what their expect what their expectations are for you for that day. Got it. So, but a lot of it, a lot of it is sitting and waiting. <laughs> there are days where I sit in holding more than I'm on set. There's other days where I'm on set longer than I'm than I'm sitting. But when you're on set, a lot of times you're standing and you know it's a <laughs> lot of standing. <laughs> well, how do you pass that time? Do you bring books, magazines? Uh, like, are you able to have your phone on set? Like, how does that work? Yeah. So uh, there's there's some cases where you can have your phone um, as long as you have places where you can hide it. And of course, it has to be silent. Um, and so during the downtime, some people do pull out the phones. Uh, they do discourage no, no photography or videotaping on set while you're there. Um, but uh, for me, I, I'm a people watcher, so usually I'll either, you know, engage with some of the other background actors, you know, get to know them. Because really with background, networking is very right. important. Um, to be able to, you know, figure out where can you, you know, go next and, you know, getting those referrals right. from, from other background. Hey, I know so and so they can, they can come and do this with us. So that's, well, that's really important. Well, that's great. Yeah. Now, Robert, you know, uh, same uh, kind of question. Like, do you find that in, uh, in productions that you run into the same circle of people who do background acting or like, you know, describe, uh, you know, your experience when you arrive on set? Um, like, uh, how, what happens when you first arrive there as well? Yeah, Jeff, you know, a lot of it, the experience is the same as what Susan's just talked about. Uh -huh. You know, and I think something that's really important that I want to get across is that, um, you know, they have what's called call time, okay? And w when you have a call time, it doesn't mean you show up at that call mm -hmm. time. The call time means that you're already there, you're dressed, and you're ready to go. So if you have an 11 o'clock call time, you know, you need to get there like 10.30, 10.15, especially if you're going to need to get into costume and makeup because your call time is when you're ready to go. And I've had the same experiences with Susan, too. It kind of reminds me of an old term that we used to have in the Army called hurry up and wait. And wait. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay? <laughs> because that's what it's all about, uh, you know, being a background actor. Um, I have found the same thing that Susan has in that uh, you can network with people while you're waiting. Uh, there is a lot of downtime as a background actor. Um, bringing a book. Um, a lot of times I, I see people laying on the floor sleeping, mm. okay, waiting to be called back on the set. And so that's not unusual. And um, even when you're, when you're filming, there's a lot of downtime even when filming because, you know, they'll do a take and they'll do it again and they'll do it again. And you might find that you're sitting in a role, in a position as a, as a background person and they're going to do 10 or 15 takes on the same scene. Interesting. And I remember, if I may, we did, uh, we did in episode three of season three of The Chosen, that episode was when Jesus was in the temple. And that shoot was about a 12-hour shoot. Mm -hmm. And that's all we did for the entire day. Wow, wow, wow. So, yeah. so it, hurry up and wait is, uh, is often <laughs> a, uh, a, a concept there. But also, you bring up something that's very important and something that uh, you know, in life is very important. Being on time is being late. Being early is being on time. 
Well, with that, we're gonna jump to break here, but don't uh, don't go away. When we come back, we're gonna have a fun game called Fortunately Unfortunately, where I'm gonna let our background actors tell us a story about being on set in a fun improv exercise. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long-range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes Store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Let's face it. People tend to put trust in professionals that stand out from the crowd with a distinguished and unique personal brand. In today's competitive digital world, one of the most powerful ways to achieve this top of mind awareness is with a personal branding video. As the name suggests, it's a short video that communicates who you are, your professional focus, your ideal connections, and the values you offer to those you work with. The goal is to address your target audience's curiosity as well as give them reasons why they should trust you. A personal branding video is a more engaging way to deliver your message. It generates more trust with your audience. It improves your online presence and it's an easily shareable marketing asset. Sync Lab Media is offering professionals in the DFW area an opportunity to benefit from wholesale pricing by participating in a personal branding video day at our studio right here in Addison, Texas. Go to personalbrandingvideo.now.site for all of the details and upcoming dates for our next personal branding video day at Sync Lab Media. We'll see you at our next personal branding video day. Welcome back to Take Two, where I'm here with Robert Honigsfeld and Susan Skowiak. We're going to play a fun improv game called Fortunately, Unfortunately, where we are going to tell a fun story about on-set life, but uh, one person has to start off by giving a point by saying, fortunately, this happened. Give it to the next person and say, unfortunately, this happened. Back and forth with a cohesive beginning, middle, and end. And I want to start it off by saying, fortunately, we have two fantastic background actors who are going to tell us a little bit about life. Thank you. Well, fortunately, Susan, when uh, I was shooting uh, in The Chosen out in Weatherford, I was able to spend the night at a motel overnight for the call time the next day. But unfortunately, the hotel was more expensive than what you got paid for as being an extra. Well, but fortunately for me, I did have my credit card with me and I was able to take care of the bill. And fortunately, you had an early morning call at four o'clock in the morning, so you really didn't get much sleep. No, actually, fortunately, my call time wasn't until 2 p.m. that afternoon. Well, unfortunately, it was cold that day, so did you bring enough of your clo clo clothes with you? Well, fortunately for me, my costume consisted of a very heavy robe and a headpiece. Oh, but unfortunately, that must make it difficult to use the restroom. Well, fortunately for me, I was able to lift it up when I needed to. <laughs> oh, but unfortunately, <laughs> were there places that you could go to do that? Well, fortunately, they did have proper facilities on set. Oh, but unfortunately, they were close to the line where you get your food. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately... There was a wall dividing the area. Ah, but unfortunately, I lost. <laughs> unfortunately, that brings the end of the story here. But, uh, but I love that. It's a great way to, uh, to have fun with the story and to uh, actually, you gave actually real life examples of what it's like it, to be on yes, set there. It is, so definitely. that's actually, uh, actually really funny. Now, um, 
What was the most, Susan, I'm gonna uh, give this uh, question to you. What was the most fun or memorable background character specifically that you've ever played in your, in your career? So. so, and that was actually recently. So um, there's a new series coming out by Taylor Sheraton called Bass Reef. So Taylor Sheraton is the one that does Yellowstone, 1883, 1926. So he's coming out with a new one called Bass Reeves that's coming out at the end of this year, which is from the 1870s. And I've always wanted to do a period piece. So Great. right off the bat, I knew it was going to be fun, and so I got to be a townsperson um, in a couple of episodes uh, so far, and then another one coming up. So being able to dress in the old costumes, being on set in the 1870s, horse and carriage, dirt roads, the whole thing, and that was just, I mean, it was just a blast. I mean, I just had so much fun being able to participate, you know, in that, and then all the, all the people that I met there, and it was just, I think that was probably the most fun I've ever had. Jeff, I think back, and uh, it was one of the early roles I had where I was playing the part of a moving man in a show called Father of the Bride. And I was using a cigar as a prop. Uh, wasn't a fake cigar. It was a real cigar. And what happened was every time I went on stage, I was so excited, I was chomping down on that cigar, and it would be breaking off in my mouth, okay? And by the time I would run off stage, I'd be sick oh, because no. the cigar was breaking off in my mouth. So when you talk about memorable rules, I'll never forget that. Oh, my. Never. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely something that would leave a bad taste in your mouth, yes? <laughs> Very good. Now, uh, oftentimes uh, in the acting community, you hear about... Um, background actors who take a big step up into the world of acting. Yeah. Do either of you aspire to use background acting as a stepping stone to bigger and better things, uh, Susan? Yeah, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I decided, you know, I was having so much fun uh, being on set, being a part of the process. It's really enjoyable. So I ended up uh, deciding to go to acting. So I've got an acting coach now. And um, I got my reel done and I got my photos done and I've been starting to apply for some speaking roles and I did just get uh, my first speaking role um, mm -hmm. which starts this week so I'm very excited so yeah so I'd like congratulations. to congratulations thank you yeah, yeah. Awesome. so it's, it's, it's going to be a really fun character I'm really going to enjoy it it's a short film um, so not too many lines because you know I'm a little worried about the whole memorization thing you know? <laughs> but um, I'm really looking forward to it so yeah so I'm, I'm taking it to the next step to the next level but I still like to do background work because it is it is a lot of fun and you get to play so many different characters, right. like you said uh, in the beginning. It's a lot of fun. That's right. awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Robert, um, same to you. Same question, yeah, same huh? Question. Yeah. Jeff, I have absolutely no aspirations <laughs> to be anything other than a background actor, okay? I enjoy it. Um, I, I really don't want to spend the time memorizing lines, uh -huh. dance steps, singing songs, okay? <laughs> I'm done with that, Jeff. I'm 75 years young, and I'm just enjoying myself doing the background work. And, you know, and because I really don't have any aspirations to go any further than background, I'm able to list those things on my resume, you know, because I want people to know that I'm available for background work, and I'm really comfortable in doing that. And like Susan says, you know, you just meet some wonderful people on mm -hmm. set doing that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And the Dallas acting community is a tight-knit group. And, uh, you know, you often meet uh, lifelong friends uh, oh, by yeah. being on set. Definitely. So Definitely. That is for sure. Well, I want to thank you both for being guests on Take Two. I hope our audience uh, took uh, some great insights away from the life of the working background actor. And I'd like to give the opportunity to uh, let our audience find out a little bit more about you. Uh, Susan, do you have an uh, Instagram or uh, uh, anything that you want to uh, you know, Yes, I, so with? I have an Instagram, uh, S. Skoviak, uh, Instagram account, um, Facebook, Susan Skoviak, and then I'm also on IMDb. Awesome, very good. And Robert, you are also on IMDb as well? That's correct, and Jeff. Our and our audience can find out more about your roles and everything that you do from there. Absolutely, and I have a Facebook page under my name. And that's the entire extent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic, fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, watching our episode uh, about background actors here on Take Two. You can always uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. And don't forget to download the Sync Lab Media Network app on your smart TV on Roku, Apple TV, 
on Google Play and Amazon Fire. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for watching Take Two. Have a great day.